I've got the Neumann NDH30 headphones, but that's not all. I've collected some of the best studio headphones in the world and tested them all over the last four years. So are the Neumann NDH30 headphones worth the price? And how do they compare to some of the best out there? Let's find out. The Neumann NDH30 is a premium open back studio headphone that sells for around $650 right now. There's certainly no limit to how premium headphones can get, but these sit in a price zone of some pretty well-respected contenders, including the Biodynamic DT1990s. But the difference between the NDH30s and the 1990s is huge. I'll get to that in a sec. If you're interested in buying any of the headphones I mentioned in this video, I'll put links to them in the video description below. I gotta get something out of the way first. I've had the Neumann NDH20, the closed back headphones from Neumann for a while now, and I've enjoyed using them. Excellent build quality, great for mixing, but what you've all been waiting for are these open back versions. Open back headphones are widely regarded as better. They let sound leak out, which gives you a less closed in sound than traditional headphones that keep the sound contained and very close to your ears. With open back headphones, we're supposed to hear a wider sound, a bigger sound stage. So do the NDH30s deliver in sound stage? Yes, they certainly do. I listened to some tracks with wide sounds pushed far to the left and right, and the perceived distance is much further compared to the closed back NDH20s. Are they as wide as the Biodynamic DT1990s? Not quite. In fact, I compared the soundstage of the NDH30s with several Biodynamic headphones, and even the cheaper 990s from Biodynamic had a wider soundstage. Now, it's not a huge difference, but if you like wide sound, the Biodynamics will do it for you. Now, when I tested these against the Sennheiser HD600s, they were quite similar in soundstage. If you're looking for wide sound at a lower price, definitely look at the Sennheiser 600s. Now, hold up, before you click the buy button on one of these, there's something about the Neumanns that you may prefer compared to the other headphones. Before I get to that, if you're new around here, I'm Sanjay C. I make videos about music production and the latest studio gear. Consider subscribing. I bring you the best reviews and a Saturday news report video with the latest from the music production world and free plugins. So where do the Neumann NDH30s have the edge? It's the evenness of sound, particularly when it comes to the mid-range frequencies. This is where the NDH30s shine. The mid-range is excellent. Vocals are sitting just right. The mid-range focus is where it's supposed to be. And if you're gonna mix on the go with headphones, I think the NDH30s are going to deliver a mix that translates better than others. They're not gonna replace studio monitors, but they'll give you a pretty good reference when you need them. There's another winning feature. I'll get to that in a bit. And hey, if the Neumann headphones are too expensive for you, I've reviewed some budget headphones in a video here. It's not just the soundstage that's been improved over the NDH20s. Bass booms wider. These headphones have great bass. You can feel it. And again, the bass sits just where it needs to for mixing, and it stays clear. And they aren't as boomy and in your face as the Audio-Technica MTH50Xs. Question, what's more important to you when it comes to headphones, bass or a wider soundstage? Comment below. I'll be honest, I usually don't pick up headphones when I start mixing. In fact, I usually pick up headphones for one reason only when I mix. Before I get to that, a word from our sponsor, DistroKid. If you're recording songs and producing music at home, you should be sharing it with the world. It's super easy to get your music out there using DistroKid. DistroKid lets you upload music to Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube Music, Pandora, Amazon, pretty much everywhere. Best of all, they make it really easy. Just upload your track, add some artwork, and they do the rest. 
DistroKid also collects earnings for you when your listeners play or purchase your music, and they help you market your music with tools built right in. Their hyperfollow page feature lets you share your latest music with your friends on Facebook or anywhere you can share a link, and they can easily follow you to get notified of your upcoming releases. I've actually created two dedicated videos on DistroKid to give you all the details about how it works, how you upload, and how you get paid, and the features you don't want to miss. You can watch those videos here. Check out those videos, and if you're ready to sign up, I'll include a link in the video description that'll give you 7% off your first year of DistroKid membership. All right, so when do I typically pick up headphones in the studio? Well, to pick out problems or sounds that I need to tweak. And this is where I think the Neumanns fall short of the buyer dynamics, even the cheaper DT770 250 ohm headphones. The buyer dynamics bring a lot of clarity, sometimes even harsh clarity in the high frequencies, but it's really effective for picking out issues in your mix. Hey, what do you use headphones for in your studio? Mixing, recording vocals, privacy, comment below. Now, if the harshness of biodynamic headphones bothers you, then I think you'll prefer the Neumanns. But which one? The closed NDH20s or the open back NDH30s? If you're looking for headphones that are going to cover all your studio needs, including recording vocals and everything else, then you might be better off with the NDH20s, the closed back version. They are very similar in sound to the NDH30s and I've loved using them since the day I got them. And you can use them while recording with a microphone since they're closed back. You can't do that with open back headphones. By the way, these headphones have have a higher impedance than most. That means you may get slightly lower volumes from devices that can't drive headphones that loud. But I tested these out on my MacBook and they were loud enough for me. And they were definitely loud enough running through the Universal Audio Apollo interface. Okay, so what's that other winning feature of the NDH30 headphones? Build quality and comfort. These have the best build of any headphones I've reviewed on my channel. They're solid, metal, even the screws give this thing a sturdy look. The rubber feel of the headband, the velvety feel of the ear cups, they got everything right in my opinion. And there's a reason I displayed these headphones all this time. They look awesome. And these are excellent for long sessions. They're weightier than many other headphones, but I have used them for long sessions and they were very comfortable. Real quick, what's in the box? Well, not a whole lot. You get the headphones, a nice, very long straight cable, and a convenient bag to carry the headphones. That's it. So who are these headphones for? Well, at $650, they're certainly in that premium price range, close in price to the Biodynamic 1990s, and I think the Neumanns deliver, especially if you're looking for some excellent mid-range sound. The bass is great, the build quality is outstanding. If you're in the market for headphones at this price range, these should definitely be on your list. But I wanna hear from you. Comment below with the headphones you're using in your studio right now, and what's on your wish list for headphones if you are upgrading. If you're interested in buying the Neumann NDH30 headphones or any of the headphones I've talked about in this video, you'll find links below to the best prices on Zounds, Sweetwater, Toman, and Amazon. If you wanna check out other premium headphone options for your studio and some of my recommended budget headphone picks, watch the videos right here. Keep making the music you love and I'll see you on Saturday.